Hello, today we're going to be touching on reliability engineering. Uh, reliability theory is the foundation of reliability engineering, and for engineering purposes, reliability is defined as the probability that a device will perform its intended function during a specific period of time under stated conditions. Mathematically, this may be expressed as, well, it's an integral function, f sub x, uh, where the, where is the fa failure probability function, and t is the length of period, well, basically it's time, starting from zero. So reliability engineering is concerned with four things. Uh, Reliability is a probability. This is the f this is that the failure is regarded as a random phenomena, and it is a reoccurring event. Uh, second, reliability is predicted, intended function. Generally, this takes is taken to mean operation without failure. Third, reliability applies applies to a specific period of time. And fourth, reliability is restricted to the operation under stated conditions, that's environmental conditions, so on and so forth. There are a lot of tasks, methods, and tools that can be used to achieve reliability. Each system requires a different level of, re of reliability. Commercial airliners must undertake a wide range of conditions, that's environmental conditions. Consequences of failures are extremely grave. A pencil sharpener may be more reliable than an airliner. Reliability program plan is used to document exactly what tasks, methods, tools, and analysis and tests are required for a particular system. For complex systems, a reliability program is a separate document. For simple systems, it may be combined with systems engineering management plan. For any system, one or more reliability engine is adequate to a specified requirement. Reliability requirements address the system itself, test and assessment. Reliability requirements are included in the appropriate system, subsystem requirements, specifications, test plans, and contract requirements. System reliability parameters. Requirements are specified using reliability parameters. The most common is mean time between failure, which can be specified as a failure rate or the number of failures during a given period. These parameters are very useful for, for systems that are operated on a regular basis. Reliability increases as the MTBF increases. The MTBF is usually specified in hours. It's important to note that once you reach the MTBF, you're at a 60% failure rate. A a special case of mission success is a single shot device or si system. Examples include airbags, thermal batteries, and missiles. Single shot reliability is specified as a probability of success. Uh, for such systems, a probability of failure on demand is a reliability measure. So PFD is derived from failure rate and mission time on non repairable items. For a repairable item it is obtained from failure rate or MTTR, mean time to repair or test interval. Reliability monitoring is, is the process of predicting or understanding the reliability of a, of a component or system. Two separate fields of investigation are common. Physics of the failure approach the part stress modeling for systems with clearly defined failure time, uh, the empirical distribution function of these failure types could be determined. This is done in general in an accelerated experiment with increased stress. These experiments can be divided into two main categories, early failure rate or infant failure, uh, 
a decreasing failure rate over the parts bathtub curve. Here, here in general, only moderate stress is necessary. So-called zero defect experiments, only limited information about the failure distribution is required. Here the stress, stress time, and sample size is low, that not a single failure occurs due to insufficient sample size. Only an upper limit of the early failure rating can be determined. Uh, a study of the intrinsic failure distribution, uh, which is often material property, higher, higher stresses are necessary to get failure in a reasonable period of time. Because reliability is a probability, even, even highly reliable systems have some chance of failure. Now, how do we calculate MTBF? Well, MTBF, remember, that's a 60% failure rate, is the number of units times the number of hours divided by the number of failures. System survivability, on the other hand, is, is where we go from epsilon to negative T, which is our time period of interest, divided by MTBF that we derived in this formula. Reliability engineering must also address requirements for various reliability tasks. These requirements are generally specified in the contract. Reliability tasks include analysis, planning, failure reporting, task selection. Critical systems may require formal failure reporting. Uh, the most common reliability program tasks are documented in 785 and IEEE 1332. Design for reliability is an emerging discipline that refers to the process of designing reliability into the product. Uh, typically, the first step in the DFR process is to set the system's reliability requirements. Reliability must be designed into the system. Reliability design begins with the development of a model. Reliability models use block diagrams and fault tree analysis a uh, graphical means for evaluating the relationships between different system elements. So here uh, are the many tasks and techniques that are used uh, to specify particular industries and applications commonly include built-in tests, failure mode and effect analysis, reliability simulation modeling, thermal analysis, reliability block diagrams, fault tree analysis, sneak circuit analysis, accelerated testing, reliability growth, Weibull analysis, electromagnetic analysis, and statistical uh, inference. So we have to have a sequential test plan. The purpose of testing is to discover the possible problems in the design as early as possible and ultimately provide confidence that the system meets the reliability requirements. Reliability testing is performed at several levels. Complex systems are t tested at component, circuit board, unit, assembly, and subassembly sub systems. The test nomenclature varies among different applications. Uh, reliability growth techniques and failure reporting analysis and corrective action systems, FRACAS, are often employed to improve reliability testing processes. Uh, reliability, the desired level of statistical confidence also plays an important role in reliability testing. Statistical confidence is increased by increasing either the test time or the number of units under test. Reliability test plans are designed to achieve the specific reliability at, at the specific confidence level with a number of units, test units and number of time. Remember it's units times time divided by failures. So we need to define what the failures are. Sometimes we have a scoring me mechanism uh, depending on the severity of the failure encountered. Accelerated life testing. The purpose of accelerated life testing is to induce field failure in laboratory at a much 
faster rate by providing a harsher but not nevertheless representative environment. In such a test, the product is expected to fail in a lab just as it would have failed in the field, but in much less time. The main objective of an accelerated life test is either of the following. Discover failure modes, predict the normal field life, accelerated testing need planning as follows, Defen define the objective and the scope, collect requirement required information, identify the stresses, determine level of stress, conduct accelerated test and analysis, and then analyze the accelerated data. Common way to determine a life stress analysis are a Rhesus model, airing model, inverse power law model, temperature humidity model, and temperature non-thermal model. Software reliability engineering is a bit different because we're it's relatively new and we're taking a look at how application software behaves within its operating system and the operating system and how it behaves with the hardware. Uh, operational systems. After a system is produced, reliability engineering during the system operation phase monitors, assesses, and collects deficiencies. So this is when the product is actually being manufactured. System failures and corrective actions are reported to the reliability engineering organization. The data is constantly, are constantly analyzed using statistical techniques. This is because the operational end of the business can only decrease the reliability of the product, not increase it. Uh, systems, systems of any significant complexity are developed by an organization of people such as commer commercial company or government agencies. The reliability organization must be consistent with the company's organizational structure. For small, not critical systems, reliability engineering may be informal. As complexity grows, the need arises for a formal reliability function. Because reliability is important to the customer, the customer may even specify certain aspects of reliability. Certification. The American Society for Quality has a program to become a Certified Reliability Engineer, CRE. Certification is based on education experience and a certification test. Periodic recertification is required. So Reliability Engineering Education, uh, probably the college or university that provides the, the, the most education is the University of Maryland. Uh, reliability in engineers have an engineering can have an engineering degree which can be in any field of engineering from accredited universe accredited or non-accredited universities or college programs to get more information i would recommend number one quality management theory and application and that concludes our video i hope you found this to be informative have a good day